everybody and welcome to another Dad Rail video. If this happens to be the first video you've seen by me, then my name's Richard and I'm a freight train driver and former passenger train driver based in the southeast of England. Today we are going to be having a look at Skyhook Games newly released Midland Mainline for Dovetail Games Train Sim World 3. More specifically the Midland Mainline HST. We're going to be doing the 158 in a separate video. Before we jump in guys, I've got to tell you that all the views and opinions expressed within this video are solely my own and may not affect those of any companies I may be employed by or associated with. I've also got to tell you that Dovetail Games and Skyhook have given me this route completely free of charge, however I'm under absolutely no obligation to tell you I like it if I don't, likewise I'm under no obligation to tell you I don't like it if I do. Something like that anyway. Yes, all the opinions are my own and I will give you an honest review as always. So without further ado, let's press the button. We're doing this live as always, so let's hope it's going to work. Okay, so here we go. Midland Mainline. Oh, we'll jump straight into a timetable service. And as you can see there, we've got the um, high-speed train, EMT, East Midland trains. We've got the LMS Jubilee, which has got a couple of rail tour services on there. The Class 45 um, peak, again with rail tours. Uh, the 377, where you can do... Um, Unit drags from Derby, there's a couple of scenarios with that on there. The 158, which we will be doing in a separate video. And the Class 66, um, which has got a couple of rail tours and railhead treatment train services if you have uh, the necessary locomotives and layers for that. So we are going to be doing the high-speed train. Uh, we will do the two power cars and eight passenger cars. So we will be a 10 car. I'm just making a note of that because I have a habit of stopping in the wrong place. And as you can see, I have already had a little play on this. So we're going to do the London St Pancras to Nottingham run, um, which will take us from Leicester to Nottingham on this route. It's about a half an hour run. Um, it's, it's a pretty good length run, so we're going to jump into that. We'll keep the dynamic weather turned off. Um... The reason I'm turning the dynamic weather off is because last time I'd done a stream with it on, it started off looking lovely. We got halfway along the route and it was chucking it down with rain and we couldn't see anything. And being that the idea, excuse me, being that the idea is to preview the route, it's probably a good idea that we leave that off. Um, 17th of April is pretty good. Should be a nice daytime run. Let's press get started. So here we are, one Delta 17 London St Pancras to Nottingham. High speed train EMT, we are 489.1 tonnes, 10 coaches, which is 239.5 yards. So let's start by having a look round outside. And she looks and sounds really nice. So this uh, HST Class 43 is the Valenta... Uh, 185 engine version which is not quite as loud and meaty as the original engines but uh, nevertheless it is quite nice so let's jump back in the cab here and get it set up so as you can see the cabs had a complete revamp from the Great Western Express HST um, we've got the addition of GSMR radio here and yeah it just generally looks a lot nicer and a lot tidier and a lot more authentic. So, first thing we're going to do is get the safety systems on. Now, I can't find a button anywhere in the cab to turn the safety systems on, which is probably me just being me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Control and Enter, which is going to put our safety systems in. I do apologise if you can hear cats behind me. I have kittens. <laughs> right, okay, so, key on. Into forward. There we go, and we are opening the doors on the left-hand side. So what else we got to worry about here? We've got our... Uh, oh, there's the AWS isolation switch. Right, okay. <laughs> right next to your headlights. Headlights, day, headlamps and markers. So we're going to charge our brake pipe up to initial because we don't want the train running away while we're loading our passengers in. We can see the brake pipe coming up just there. Hopping back outside, our lights are on. Which gives us just a few moments to have a look around at Nottingham Station here. Sorry, apologies, Leicester Station. <laughs> Which does look very, very nicely modelled. We'll check that we've got tail lamps on the uh, back of the train, hopefully we have. We have indeed, lovely. Ah, 
That's looking very nice indeed. I do like the out of order on the ticket machine. Brilliant. As expected. Looking very nice indeed. We will have a look through the inside of the train um, in a little while as well. But for now, let's see if we can get it moving. Okay, so locked doors. We are running late. But that's nothing new for a Dadra stream. Okay, so what I'm going to do is release the brakes. Hop into the outside view. And uh, get a good vantage point. And I'm going to shut up and let the train do the talking. Why are we not moving? Because we're not in forward. I promise I drive trains in real life. Okay, let's give that another go. Beautiful, beautiful, sounds really nice. Okay, so let's have a quick look at our timetable, put the HUD back up. Um, so we've just stopped at Leicester, our next station is East, Mid East Midlands Parkway and then on to Nottingham. So the whole route is 37 miles, so it's not the longest route in the world, but it is a, um, a triangle configuration. So if I put the route map up briefly and we zoom right out. So we're down the bottom here at uh, Leicester and you can see you've got this triangle configuration or this sort of Y-shaped configuration up here. So over to our right we've got Nottingham and then over to our left we've got Derby. So you can also do services between Derby and Nottingham, you can do services up from Leicester to um, Derby uh, and vice versa. So there's a good selection and a good kind of um, good range of services that you can do on here. So jumping back in the cab. I'm going to leave my HUD up because I've got absolutely no idea where I'm going or what I'm doing. So I think the engine sounds pretty decent at the moment. Nice horn sound as well. Let's take the power down. Some pretty nice run sounds going on there. And we will also drop a little bit of brake in. Just doing a running brake test there, just checking the brakes are actually working as intended. Uh, which they are because we're slowing down, so brilliant. Let's get the power in all notch, all five notches of it so we can hear that lovely uh, Valenta engine. So having a quick look around the cab here. The one thing that, you know, this is personal preference, but it does disappoint me a little bit, is we've got no working GSMR, which is something, since Cross City, I've wanted to see that on every single train. It's it, it's not the end of the world, the fact we haven't got it, but it would be really nice if we had working GSMR. But we do have a GSMR model, uh, which is good. So we've got our light controllers there that we've already spoken about. We've got our AWS switch, uh, windscreen, and de-icer. Um, whether it has any function or not, I don't know, but the switch works. And our desk lights, which we can't see at the moment for obvious reasons. So coming around, we've got our wiper control. Um, LED, t oh, that's a nice feature, the LED test there. Um, train supply controls, which are for your train lighting and heating. Uh, you've got your DRA there, which works as intended. As soon as we press the DRA, it cuts the power. Uh, so we should have to reset the power now in order to get that back in. That is correct. Uh, we've got parking brake controls down there. Local engine stop. I believe that's just a light. That's like a fault light that comes on. And then over to our right here, we've got engine stopped. Uh, actual engine stop and engine start button. We will check 
that that works and check the sound effects on that when we get to the end of the line. If I do it now, there's a good chance I won't get it started again and we'll be, uh, we'll be knackered. Uh, slow speed control there, gauge dimmer. Oh, that's good. Look, the gauge dimmers are working. Lovely. And we've got an award for that as well. And driver guard buzzer. And we got our brake test switch over there, which is used for brake continuity testing. Um, tachometer. What have we got? Contact signal and controls. DRA isolation and some various fire things over there. So, yeah, generally speaking, it, it's, it's a nice looking cab. We are going to jump up out the seat very briefly. Um, just to check the back panel. So, driver interface unit. This is for your uh, downloads. So it's like your black box controller, so you put your pin number in there. Uh, unfortunately, that doesn't work. We've got engine room lights. Um, however, we can't go into the engine room. That is blocked off, um, which is a little bit of a shame. But never mind, never mind. So I don't know too much about this route, so there's not really a great deal I can tell you about it as we're, as we're going along in terms of um, how it compares to real life. So I'm, I'm kind of just going almost like a complete outsider here with my, my point of view and my perspective. It looks very nice. I will emphasise I am playing on a uh, pre-release version of the route, so... There, there may be a few things that change between now and the, the full release. But yeah, I'm, I'm look liking the look of that. So as I understand it as well, there's our 110. As I understand it as well, the scenery... ...is detailed for absolutely miles. Yeah, look at that there. It's, it just goes on for absolutely miles. There's absolutely no need for that at all. Um, but it's brilliant. Jumping back in the cab. And we take our power down now so we're not speeding. And we've got a nice little bit of uh, cant, a little bit of banking as we go around the corners here, which is really nice. No clickety clack over the points though, which is always one of my one of my bugbears. But the run sounds are really nice. Oh, we've got some DB Cargo wagons in the sidings there. So one of the other things that I have picked up on, there are no, as yet, uh, there are no freight layers on this route. But hopefully that's something that um, that will change. I, th the way I kind of see this route is almost as a seed. You've got this kind of core route, if we put our map up again. You've got this kind of core route. But with the depots over here and, and the branch lines going off here and sort of... I, I reckon this route is almost like a seed and there's a lot of potential to build off of it and to expand into other areas. So, what, what you know, I think, and it, it was mentioned on one of the live streams, I think there, there is potential for other developers or maybe even Skyhook themselves to build add-ons to this route and maybe put more layers into it. So, I, I think it's... Uh, it's definitely got potential. So we're good up to 120. Ah, there is a double green signal here. That has been highlighted as a fault and that will be fixed. That That is one of the things I know about. That is one of the things that I know has definitely been reported and that will be fixed. Double greens being something of, that we uh, we don't have in the UK. We do have flashing greens on the East Coast Main Line, which were put in as part of a trial to enable 140 miles per hour running. So basically, when you had um, when you had flashing green signals, it authorised the train to run at 140 miles an hour. Um, but they were actually never used; they were only ever used for testing. Although they are still there and they do still flash.
lovely overgrowth on the platform there. The stations look, and I know we're whizzing through them at, at great speed, but we will do a 158 run uh, a bit later on. The stations do look very nice. So, Royal Fry is up to 125. Let's see if we can get that out of the unit um, before we have to put the brakes on for East Midlands Parkway. So performance wise the route does seem to perform um, very well. I'm getting a solid 60 FPS at the moment. I do have my frame rate maxed out at 60. I haven't noticed a great deal of stuttering on the route. Um, it, it does run pretty smoothly. It's, it's pretty well optimised. 120, are we going to get 125? Just as I say that we get a slight bit of stuttering going on. But no, it, it does generally seem pretty well um, optimised. can open the door going along, but I believe that the driver's cab door is not part of the uh, door interlock circuit, so I believe in real life, actually I know for a fact that in real life you can drive these with the doors open because I have some drone footage of a Great Western Railway HST down at Dawlish. Oh look, there we go, that's a fail. We didn't get 125. There was a speed restriction there, I didn't slow down for it, naughty naughty. And now we're back up to 120. I do like the way the signals are really pronounced in this. It's one thing I've, I've mentioned in routes before that the signals don't really pop out and didn't stand out, but on this route they seem to be they, they seem to be quite good as we come around the corner here. I mean, you can see your red off in the right there and your green there. You, your signals are popping out against the background, which is really nice. Okay, 1.4 miles to East Midlands Parkway, which is our only stop on our journey today. Let's start getting the power back down. And we know we're getting near East Midlands Parkways, of course, because we've got the cooling towers there off the power station. I think I've left my braking miles too late, which could be quite an epic fail on a... Considering I am doing this live, yeah, we're going into 100% braking. We're going to overshoot the station. We might be okay. <laughs> this, is, this is not how to drive a train in real life, guys. Okay, so we are... I'm trying desperately not to use emergency. See, that's a 100% brake. I mean, I don't actually know exactly how an HST performs, but I would say that that's probably pretty good and pretty accurate. That was almost a perfect stop. I mean, everyone spilt their dinner, but almost a perfect stop. And we got quite a lot of delay there on the brakes releasing, which is, which is very sort of prototypical of locomotive hauled stuff. So that, that's really good, the fact that you've got to wait for the brakes to come up before you can move. Um, I think the game's happy. We do have some stop car markers there, actually, don't we, on the side there. That's the five. We'll pull up to the end of the platform because we're diligent and we're doing it properly. I'm loving the detail on the platform edges there. Okay. <laughs> right, unlock doors. That looks really, really nice. I'm just saying I'm loving the detail here on the on the platform edges. 
all the kind of the kind of meshing and netting there. That's really really nice. And they've done a really good job at recreating the stations on this. I must say. And the very famous cooling towers there. Infamous cooling towers. Famous on the route anyway. East Midlands Parkway. Not sure about the the font and the size of the writing on the signs. I think maybe that's something that needs to be um, looked at. I could be completely wrong. I could be completely wrong. But yeah, the detail on the stations, they, they look really, really nice. Really nice indeed, yeah. And oh, we've got the car park over here as well. Yeah, okay, we, we won't look too much at that bit. <laughs> but yeah, the, the, the bits we can see from the train certainly do look nice. Let's see if we can get a flyby shot as we, uh, as we pull out. <laughs> I am liking that. I, I am I am liking this HST. So the next station will be at Nottingham in 7.5 miles. Uh, we've got a 90 mile an hour restriction coming up as we come into this beautiful tunnel. Somebody else will know what it's called in the comment section. I don't have a clue, I'm afraid. Loving the bloom effect as we come out there, making full use of the Tracy Well Freeze lighting effects. It's a very pretty route. It's a very scenic route. It's, it does look nice. Credit where credit's due. Skyhook have done, have done a really nice job on this. And we're trying not to... We're trying not to speed. There is a little bit of noise as we go across the points there, but not as much as I would necessarily expect. So one of the things that I think Train Sim World lacks in general, and I am I am a fan of Train Sim World, as, as you guys know if you've seen uh, my other videos and live streams, but one of the things that doesn't feel natural on this is, is, is the cab bounce and the cab sway. So there's a little bit there as we went across the points, there was a little tiny bit of sway, but I would expect quite a lot more sort of bounce uh, and, and cab sway and stuff. I do have it turned up. Um, uh, it's in gameplay, isn't it? Um, general? It's in there somewhere. Yes, I, I do have it. I do have the cab sway turned up. Um, but it's something I don't think they've got quite right in any of the routes yet. Is the cab sway. Holding it at 80. And we've got two yellows, so let's drop a little bit of brake in. 
it just stepped up to a green. So we'll take the brake off and just keep coasting for the minute. Level crossings. Church off in the background there. And we're back to running on greens again. We'll just keep the speed down. Uh, we don't want to catch up the train in front. That's a good point, actually. I don't think we've seen any AI traffic. I could be wrong, but I don't recall seeing any AI traffic as yet. Like I say, I, I am playing on a pre-release version, so that's probably the reason why. I, I very, very much doubt that AI traffic isn't a thing. I suspect it's because I'm playing on a pre-release version. That's, that's why we haven't seen it. So I think we can get a little bit more power in now. Housing estate there with the trampolines in the garden. Yeah, let's let's get it going again. building site off to the left. Yeah, there's a lot of potential for um, freight layers on this route, but unfortunately there isn't any at the moment. Now, whether that's something they're planning on adding on in the future, I don't know, but I, I do think it's a bit of a missed opportunity. I do think that you can have potentially quite a lot of freight operations on here, which would be really, really nice to see. Okay, 2.7 miles to Nottingham. Let's see if we can uh, not bugger it up like we did last time, like we did at East Midlands Parkway. Let's see if we can do a better job. But yeah, I, I do feel there is a lot of a lot of uh, freight potential on this, and it's a bit of a shame that that hasn't been tapped into. So hopefully that is something they will do in a future update. I know they did on the... Um, on the Brighton Main Line, for example, there was an update a little while ago which added a few freight, a few extra freight services on. So hopefully that's something that, that will happen in this as well. So as always, guys, I'll be really interested to hear your comments on the route. So do leave your comments. Um, down in the uh, comment section below. So the route is available, it's released today as you're watching this um, and it's available for $29.99. We have an AWS magnet uh, and a green signal. There is a 40 coming up though, so let's get some braking. Yeah, this is available for $29.99 in the Steam store. Uh, it's also available on Xbox and PlayStation. Getting the speed down for that 40. I know there's been a whole kind of... You know, there's, there's a whole debate around the, the cost of DLCs at the moment. I'm, I'm not going to come comment on that, guys. I mean... Yeah, it, it's, it's up to you whether you're happy to pay that or not. All, all I ever say on that subject is devs have got to eat. They, they put the work in, they need to be paid, they need to eat, so... Um, it's, it's up to you whether you you feel it's worth that or not. Me personally, it's a good route. It's nice. I've not noticed, other than that double green and the lack of AI traffic, which are, you know, I, I'm putting this out there. I'm 99% sure that is because I'm playing in a pre-release build. Other than those two issues, I believe um, that there are, there are no bugs that I've managed to find. Okay, we've got a 25 coming up. One yellow platform seven. Coming into Nottingham. So I think on this route, uh, in current times, we would see the Voyages. Are they the Meridians, I believe, on this route? The Midland Mainline Meridians or East Midland Train Meridians? Ah, that's a... No, that's not a bug because the arrow is pointing to the left. Okay, I take it back. 
Nottingham Station is looking really nice. I am definitely liking the look of that. And we've got a 15 coming up. Uh, it looks like the 15 board is missing. Okay, so there is a... Couple of little things we've picked up on. Couple of little things, but nothing... Nothing major, which, which is good. You know, everything I've picked up on is sort of very easy to fix. And from my understanding as well that is that um, Skyhook, who have developed this route, are committed to it and committed to um, developing it and making it the best it possibly can be. So that's really, really good to hear. <laughs> and uh, floating station Stein and floating stop car marker as well. Um, yeah, just just emphasising again, guys. This is a pre-release version of the route, so I'm I'm pretty sure these little issues have been fixed. If you if you've got the re the full release version of the route and they haven't been fixed, I should be quite surprised. The brakes are performing really really well on this, and the fact they take a little while to come off is really good and really prototypical. Okay, unlock doors on the right. Mm. We will return to free roam mode uh, and, uh, as soon as the scenario ends. It just says unload passengers at the moment. Because I do want to do a walk around outside. Uh, this door is currently maintained and available. Uh, but unfortunately we can't get in there, which is a little bit of a shame. We might be able to walk through. This is not a passenger door. Okay. However, this is. Uh, but we can't get in because there is someone standing in our way. Can we possibly crouch past you? Uh, no, we can't. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. So we, we can't go in that carriage and have a look. Uh, let's try this one. Can we get past you now? Uh, no, we can't. Okay, that's a little bit, a uh, little bit annoying. No, we don't want to do that. And we can't seem to get into. Oh, there we go. So yeah, the, the interior on the coaches is looking, it's looking pretty good as well. Got the network map on there, uh, which is really nice. Oh, okay, that's somebody's head. <laughs> pre-release version, guys, pre-release version. The hit points for these doors seem to be a little bit all over the place as well. Come on. Oh, no, sorry. Uh, no, I take that back. It's because I actually need to walk right up to them. They're automatic. Okay, objective complete. What did we get? Gold medal attempt. Fantastic. Very harsh breaking there. <laughs> Very harsh breaking. Okay, let's just carry on walking through the train. Uh, hello. That's a bit weird. Uh, yeah, and we for some reason we can't get through the door here. That's a little bit strange. Yeah, and we've got nobody on the train as well. So I, I am I am sticking with the reason for these things I'm sticking with pre-release version of the route. Um, and I do honestly believe that. that That's why I'm kind of getting these issues. Uh, as a Dovetail Games ambassador, we are giving the route um, a little bit in advance so we can make content on this. For example, I'm recording this um, a couple of days before before release. Yeah, so we can't get into the other the other engine room at all. Yeah, so sometimes when we get given the route, there are still a, a couple of faults in it and bits and bobs to be ironed out. So we just have a quick look round um, the station here. Look at the shadowing on the floor from the lighting. That is lovely. That is really nice. Oh, AI traffic! 
yeah, Nottingham looking really, really good. I think I've only ever been through Nottingham Station maybe once. Looking really nice indeed. So there we go, guys. That is my my first look at the uh, new middle and main line route for Train Scene World 3 by Skyhook Games. My reviews on it are positive. Like I say, all the bugs are all the bugs that I've seen so far. I am 99% sure that is because I'm on a pre-release version. Um, and if it if it's not because I'm on a pre-release version, I am really confident in Skyhook's ability to go in and fix those. They do seem very committed to the route and very committed to um, providing us with updates for it and fixes for it. I, I believe I read somewhere that they want this to be a beacon. You know, they want this to be sort of a. Um, a prestige piece, sort of a, um, a showcase piece for what Train Sim World 3 can do, um, which which is really good to hear. So I am going to end the stream there. I'll be very, very interested to hear your thoughts on it in the comment section below, as always. If you haven't already, guys, please do hit the like button. Consider subscribing. That would be absolutely awesome. Uh, you can also join our Discord server. You'll find an invitation link in the description below. And I am on social media, which are on the screen for you now. Looking there at the East Midland Trains 158. Jumping down on the track. Check my train driver rules PTS videos for that. Um, we are now going to do a run in video number two from Nottingham to Derby in the 158. Hope to see you over there. Thanks very much for watching and see you next time.